Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Yeah. So explain to us who you are and how you came to be the head of the Ballistic Inc. Empire. This is what the people want. <laughs> well... Uh, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm the head of the empire. I work very closely uh, with, uh, you know, Eric and Brandy over at Iraq Veteran. And we really got started by uh, means of my family being in the industry, uh, screen printing and embroidery. Um, they've been doing it for close to 30 years now. So they were doing it long before I joined the military. And then I joined the military um, and I actually served with Eric. We were in the same infantry platoon. Oh, nice. uh, di yeah, different squads. So uh, he was second squad. I was fourth squad. But we did a tour in Iraq together. We came back. Uh, we all went our, our separate ways. Um, and then I reached out to him um, after a while. And I, and I said, hey, do you are you looking for someone to do any merch? And it just so happens that um, he needed someone to do his merch. And they started just doing his merch for his website. <laughs> and it started doing really well. Uh, and then we kind of you know, spitballed this idea of creating uh, a website for other content creators and advocates to work with to, cr to do their merch as well. I mean, you guys are no strangers uh, to the fact that there's a lot of businesses that don't want to work with anybody in the firearms industry or, uh, you know, the content creator community that deals with firearms. And the ones that do don't really care about the cause there. It's just a money grab for them. So this was really just a way that we could give back uh, to the to the community. So what you won't see on Ballistic Inc. are just pure content creator. I don't think we have any partners on there that just do this uh, for fun. Every single one of them is more or less an advocate or a two-way ambassador. So if you want to get just, you know, someone that has entertainment, you know, there's tons of people out there that are just doing things for entertainment. But mm -hmm. this was really a way for us to help those that got demonetized because everybody lost a ton of income uh, mm -hmm. as soon as YouTube demonetized uh, all the content creators. So mm -hmm. um, you guys know that we give the lion's share back to the content creators. I mean, if you look at the industry average and when you start comparing, you know, payouts from like Spreadshirt and, you know, Printful and Printify, mm -hmm. we're paying out uh, probably a little bit over three times what uh, those guys are paying out. Um, so our goal isn't to get rich. We still have to make a profit because we're a business and we still have to keep the lights on and keep our guys fed. Um, but at the same time, we try to give as much back to those content creators as possible. Um, and that's really the goal. So as we bring on more partners, um, we, again, we, we pick and choose who we want to work with because we have to be very careful about, you know, working with just those type uh, like ambassadors or content creators that really care about the two way, like the Second Amendment um, and the fire, firearms industry in general. Mm -hmm. So that that in a nutshell, that's what we do. We work exclusively with you know firearms manufacturers. Uh, we've done a lot of work with other companies, some of which uh, sponsor your show, uh, and also um, with the content creators. Okay, very cool. If you guys have any questions for Matt, you guys can feel free to jump in anytime. First question that pops to my mind: Who had the highest rank, you or Eric? Uh, we actually were the same rank. Uh, okay. I got there first just because I believe I had more time in grade. Uh, however, uh, we ended, uh, as far as I know, when we both got out, we both ended at the same rank. Oh, okay. All right. So yeah, he, doesn't have to, like, a, he doesn't have to salute to you or anything like that. <laughs> no, we were, we were enlisted. Uh, we, <laughs> we worked for a living. So we, we definitely weren't officers. All right. Very cool. Um, if, if, like I said, if there's anything else, feel free to jump in there, Brickell, Babyface. Um, I like the fact that, so I think it would have been easy because basically to me, um, Iraq veteran, they're like a mega powerhouse on their own. You know they, what I mean? They do well. They yeah, do well. They do pretty well. Um, and they deserve that. They work really hard. Eric and Chad, everyone else. Those aren't the only people over there that have to do with it. You know, we're talking about Brandy, a whole bunch of other people, right? Yep. But Brandy, they, John, those guys, they all put in, you know. 25 hours a day uh, mm -hmm. they work in they really really work it impressed me a lot um, you know i go down there quite often we hang out and i'm you know you know bringing stuff down and we're shooting you know we do a podcast now mm -hmm. so we're doing the podcast we shoot videos i'll step in and do videos with them 
And it always it always amazes me how much work um, goes into being a full time content creator. So yeah. these guys are filming, you know, four <laughs> or five. I mean, it's ridiculous. But I mean, everyone thinks it's it's like it's it's not a joke to us. I know that, right? right? It's not a joke to us because we do it. But everyone thinks this is easy, which is always funny to me. Babyface right. thought that too until he started doing it. <laughs> it's 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 a far lot. from easy. <laughs> yeah, the the easy part. I mean. I, I don't know, for me, it's like being at the range and everything. And then mm -hmm. the hard part is like spending all that time editing. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's the really annoying part. Yeah. Well, what, what surprised me was the costs. Um, you would assume that, you know, not just him, but there's a lot of other channels that have, you know, a huge subscriber base. And you would think that these companies open up and they just start dropping ammunition on them so they can oh. start using it for videos yeah. and all the stuff. And give you everything money. you want. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's to, to a certain extent, like you still have to go out and there's still a, an incurred cost for that. So they yeah. still have to go out buy ammo if it's like a really wonky round um you know eric works a lot with mil serps so he has to actually either reload his own ammo mm -hmm. or he has to like find someone that creates this weird like eight label round like things that just mm -hmm. aren't around anymore mm -hmm. yep. um, and it takes a lot of work to either track that kind of stuff down or either reload it or find experts to help you recast stuff yeah. um and yeah. all that stuff takes time and energy and money yeah, people think that, like, maybe I think there's other guys, other content creators on YouTube or who do things who do have really big brand deals and all kinds of stuff, and there's just tons of money pouring in. Um, Good for them. Yeah. They're lucky. It's, yeah, it's awesome. I'm not, I'm, I hope that we can one day get there. I think it's really difficult, like you said, because we're in the firearms industry and we're kind of taboo. And then even within the industry, there's not as much money, I think for advertising and stuff like that as people believe out there. So there is there is some money I think that goes into advertising and thankfully some people in the industry do support folks like ourselves and all that, but it's not as much as people think. There's not like million dollar stuff, you know, not million dollar contracts and things like that getting thrown at people. So. Right. Yeah. It's not like Logan Paul where you get paid yeah. $100,000 <laughs> to promote yeah. Dunkin' Donuts, you know. Yeah. And those guys are really big. I mean, let's be honest, like PewDiePie is so big. I don't know if you guys saw this, but, you know, he left YouTube doing live and then he went off to, what was it, uh, DLive or something? Was he doing? I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, what, yeah, I'm not familiar it? with that situation. Yeah, it was one of those things he went off to, but YouTube just made an exclusive deal with him to come back to YouTube. And it's such a big deal, like no one's disclosing how much money. Yeah. So, which is awesome. Disgusting. Yeah, Oof. PewDiePie. I mean, hey, he deserves it, man. He put the work in. He put the work in. Yeah. 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 But it's not as easy as people think. It's not even easy for us to um, grow our channels and grow our reach and everything. And that's one of the things. Like, I know Eric's been doing this for a long time. They have a bigger channel. They work really hard on it. I thought it would have been really easy for them to go, yeah, I'm just going to set up something so I can sell my merchandise and everything. And even if, he, even if people came along, it would have been easy to say, I'm only going to bring on board people who have a million subscribers. But, right. he did, but, but you guys didn't do that, right? No, he actually um, advocated to me because, you know, let's face it, the shop is really where, you know, most of the labor takes place. So all of the shirts that come through uh, essentially get printed by us. So he always, whenever he has an idea, he always says, hey, Matt, this is what we're looking at. Is that something that you guys have the bandwidth to do? And I'm like, yeah, this is something that makes sense. And at the very beginning, he always advocated for helping out the smaller channels. He really wanted to get, you know, the smaller channels on board to help them uh, because they need to get, they need to make money just like everybody else. And you could even make the argument to that the larger channels don't really need to make the the sales off the merch. Sure, it's great, but they have a lot of other deals going on um, with the bigger companies. Uh, it just worked out that, you know, everybody, everybody works well together. We have, I mean, if you go through our partner list, I think we have like 35 or 36, mm -hmm. actually the majority of them are smaller channels. I mean, we're talking like less than 50,000, 20,000 are, you know, we just signed a couple, they were only like a thousand, uh, subscribers. So mm -hmm. we, we don't discriminate based on channel, uh, subscribers. However, with that said, we do 
you know, when we have that conversation, all, everything that we do, uh, there's no charge for. So, uh, you know, when you say, hey, Matt, I want to make the gun nerds design. Mm -hmm. Well, there's an inherent cost with yeah. our design team that does that. Mm -hmm. So we have to, you know, let those guys know, well, there's certain things that we have to do to make this design uh, that we might have to share it with other, you know, mm -hmm. uh, other content creators and try to recoup some of that money. Yeah. We never say no. We just have to think very creatively how we can best use that time uh, and energy with that design. Yeah. And and personally, like, I'm happy to see that. I'm happy to see. I know Eric uh, shared the gun nerd thing. And so, I, what, yeah. What so Matt, did Tim. I think Tim did as well. Yep. So did Mac. Um, and so, to me, I, I think that's cool, you know. And plus, yeah, I, I mean, probably I make a couple of shekels. Yeah, I probably make a couple of shekels off of that. So yeah. I could either sell these shirts on my own and sell like one a week. <laughs> right. Or maybe, I don't know, some other big guys jump in there and go, oh, that's cool. And they, and, and they get on that design. And that might be an interesting way for, for content creators that are on your platform to um, also, you know, so they might not be that big, like you were just saying, numbers wise, right? Mm -hmm. But they may be great at designing things like this and they can design things that not only they use, but other people have access to and that might increase their revenue even if they don't have a broader like reach to a bigger audience out there. Right. Well, that's exactly that's exactly what happens. I think we have two or three that are just killer designers. I mean, they're really really dialed into yeah. the subscriber base and the the entire community in general. Yeah. Like 50% just... 50 tactical is someone that jumps to mind, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. Men of Arms does a really great job. I mean, mm -hmm. he's got some sick designs that he always lets us use with other content creators because he's mm -hmm. just, you know, he's dialed in. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it works out great because they might not make that money up front with actual sales, but they're making it on the back end, you know, yeah. without disclosing actual yeah. payouts. And they do let's well. Not forget, <laughs> let's not forget my t shirt. Say red Absolutely. flag law one more Say time. Red flag. That one was awesome. <laughs> Let's not forget that one. Absolutely. Wait, hold on. Could I go pull that up on the site? Hold on one second. <laughs> yeah. Let me see if I could. Let me see if I could find that and pull that up while we're here talking about there it. There we go. Oh, look at that. Can you see it? Yeah. It says. So you've seen Pulp Fiction, right? Um. Yes, Pretty of course I have. Many times. Many times. And he goes, "Say what again." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was flag law again. Yeah, yeah, that was um, oh man, what was the name of Samuel Jackson's character? Oh, um, I'm trying to remember the name. I've seen that movie a bunch of times. Yeah, someone tell uh, me. Someone remember. out there knows what uh, Samuel? What was the part? What was the name of Samuel Samuel Jackson's partner on that thing? Someone knows. I don't Someone know. Knows. I just know. I just know that line is like chicken royale with cheese. Yeah. <laughs> that was the first time I ever. I, I never knew the, the actual name, but it's true because when you when you're in another country, that's what it's called. It's called a it's called a, a royale, yeah. not mm -hmm. not a whopper. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna share the screen here and uh, pull up American Gun Chicks. Uh, I'm going to pull up her, her thing right here. So if you're looking for American Gun Chick, you can go to Partners. That's the easiest way. And uh, for some strange reason, there's a lot of pink involved. <laughs> yeah, a lot of pink. <laughs> a lot of pink involved in American Gun Chicks. Um, Ballistic Inc. has stickers now, everyone. Oh, look, let me just Ew. stop here and Ew. look at this uh, Gun Nerd sticker for a while before I go and look at American Gun Chick. No, okay, I'm going to move on. Uh <laughs> So where is it? Let me see. I probably have to go. The say what again was was probably in the beginning, right? Brickell? I think it's, I think it's towards back. the end. Yeah, I think yeah. it's one of her earlier designs. You can get watches on there. You can get Boogaloo shirts. Yeah. Oh, here it goes. Yeah, say shirt, red flag. Like... We're, yeah. we're working on getting those back in stock. I cannot believe how many of those things sold. Oh, my goodness. Those the things, Hawaiian shirts? They yeah. absolutely killed it. Those um, are cool. You yeah. Do they have you should make like a bikini like that. That'd be cool. It's possible. Yeah. I, we would have to find a manufacturer that has a, a pattern for it, the actual like the cut and sew pattern. We can probably find one. We know we know some people. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.